guys. My name is Dina Rennick and I'm an art teacher, a high school art teacher. And I've been doing a lot with the Google platform and Google Classroom, Google Sites for my classes right now, which are all virtual. And I will use a lot of these things also when we go back face to face. So there's a few things that myself and my colleagues have figured out. And this one is going to show you if you wanna do Jamboard, which is one of my new favorite tools to use for virtual art education. If you wanna use Jamboard, a lot of times you can only do 20, 20 frames. And if you have more than 20 students, that can present a problem. So I'm gonna show you how we have gotten around that 20 frame issue so that every kid gets a frame that they can work on and how to get it in alphabetical order for so it's easy for you to grade. It saved a lot of time, it's a few steps, but you can take a look, stop it and do it along with me or watch the whole thing and then do it yourself. If this is helpful, let me know, leave a comment in the comment section. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment for me. Please like, share and subscribe if this is useful for you or if you feel it would be useful for other people. So we are gonna get started. And I'm gonna show you step by step how I do it. And I'm gonna go straight to Power Teacher. I don't know if you guys are using Power School, but this is a shortcut, easy way to get all the kids assigned their Jamboard number. So you click on the backpack in Power School or whatever system you guys are using for your attendance. I'm gonna click on it, but I'll edit out the student's name so that you can't see them for privacy. So over here under the backpack is their names and I'm going to highlight their names and then I'm gonna control C or command C depending on the type of computer you have. So once I've copied it, now I'm gonna open up a tab since we're using the Google platform for Sheets. And this is gonna be where the kids go to find their name and where you go to give it to them. So you can see I already have some fourth block Jamboard number assignments with my name. So I'm gonna make a new one. And I'm gonna title it, uh, Practice Jamboard Assignments. And I'm gonna call this block one because it's really important to put the descriptive title in there so it's easy for you to find later. Block one, Renick Jamboard. Now here, we're gonna put name and then right below in the next column, you're gonna paste. So Command V or Control V, or you could right click. And then I'm also gonna take this and move it over so I can see all their names, which again, will be blacked out when you see it. This is Bo, my dog, he's helping me. So the next one is gonna be the Jamboard number. And then the next one is gonna be the frame number. This is um, this is Stand It. He's also helping me. All right, so we are going to give them assignments. Now I want to show you how we do it. So I'm going to go in the little waffle down to Jamboard, and I already created one called Jamboard Class Example. And again, you're going to want ones for each class. And here's what we decided, and it's been working well. So Jamboard allows you 20 frames. Once in a while, it allows you more than that, but you can't count on that. So we save the first five frames for teacher use. So we have resources, we have instructions, examples, and then the next ones after that, so six through 20 will be for students. This one is gonna be called Jamboard Class Example number one, Jamboard number one. And I also like to do this so that the kids can make sure they are in the right spot. So this one's gonna be called Jamboard class example, Jamboard one first block. So here I can have frames six through 20. So I go back in here and it's gonna be Once you get the first one set up, then you can copy and paste those numbers and it doesn't take quite, quite as long. 
So I'm just going through till I get to 20. Okay, now I need those same numbers down below. So here's what I can do. I'm just gonna copy those and then paste them. Now I have it going down for the next ones. Here we go. Okay. So then this one's gonna be Jamboard one. And what I can do, I can copy that and then just hit paste for the rest. And to save time, I can copy those and then it pastes more. And then we're on to Jamboard number two. If you have an even larger class, then you might need more than, I have one class where I have to have three Jamboards. And it also gives you room for if you get new students that enter your class. Okay, so now we have it set up. That's where the students will go to find out what number they are or where you will go to tell them. So now we've got Jamboard 1. What we're going to do here so that they can use it is we're going to make sure it has the right permissions. So if this was one I didn't want to let my kids work on, then when I go to share, it would say restricted um, and only my school district. But if I click on anybody in my school district and I change it to editor, now anybody who has that link, which I'll share with my class, can edit this. Then I need to make a second one because this is my first one, now I need a second one. So I'm going to go to these three dots here and I'm gonna make a copy. And here, all I have to do, I don't really have to rename it, I'm just gonna change this to say two. It's still first block. And then I'm gonna go over and get rid of the part where it says copy. Because when you make a copy, it says copy of whatever you made. So now you have both of them for that block. At first, it sounds like it's gonna be confusing, but as the students are working and you're helping them interactively in a live class, they, they say, Mr. Renee, can you take a look at mine? And I say, sure, what jam and what number? And they say, jam board one, frame eight. And then you go take a look. So here we've got our second one now, and we just wanna make sure the permissions are also correct for that one. So it is unrestricted, so we change it. Say editor, and now anybody who has the link, which is all of our students can share it. So now I've got my two jam boards, and I have a way to assign it that is all set. I'm gonna use those same assignments for the whole semester so I don't have to do that setup again. And let's say I've done this, it's a rousing success. So if you're new to Jamboard, the way to make a new frame is just to push the right arrow. So this one was something I was fooling around with and playing with, so I don't actually need it here. I'm gonna clear the frame, but this is where I was practicing the drawing over images. Once you clear it, it's gone though. And I was practicing with a homemade stylus on this one. So now there's two free ones for those first two students. And then if the next one wants it, if you just click the arrow, it makes another one. So it'll just keep on adding until you get to 20. So you don't have to do the work, the students do the work. You let them open it and click over until they get to the number of frame that they're on, and then that's theirs. Then I would say, if you are number six or number seven, whatever number you are, I have them write a sticky note with their um, first and last name and their block number. And then they hit save. And now that's theirs to work on. So to make it even easier, the next time you do an assignment, if you don't want to start all over, you don't have to. If you want to make another one for a totally different assignment, just hit copy and then give it a different name. So we're going to still have this one be Jamboard 2, 
but we're going to give it a new name. So the less you have to rename things or reinvent the wheel, the better. So we're going to call this one Second Awesome Assignment. And since we're going to still have two jam boards, we would have that one. We would say, okay. And then we would change the permissions on it. And then we would make a copy of this one and just change this to a one for the first jam board. And now we have another set just like that for the next assignment. So we have our first Jamboard class example assignment and then second awesome assignment there. The only thing you would still have to go back in is change permissions on the, on the new ones. So now you know how to make multiple Jamboards for your students if you have more than 15 or 20 and you know an easy way to assign the Jamboards, how to have the kids put a sticky note on there so that they can find theirs. And I'm gonna show you one last awesome thing that has been amazing for me. So now I'm going to show you just an easy way that I use for grading assignments on Jamboard. Instead of going in later and opening up every Jamboard and clicking through every page, here's that same one, another copy of it that I showed you. So I've got these. Let's say this is an assignment. It's not, but let's just say it is. You go over here to the upper right hand side where the three dots are, click on it, and then below rename it says download as PDF and you click on that, and then it's gonna download. And then as soon as it downloads, it's now a PDF, which, let me show you why that's easy. So now that it's a PDF, when I am grading it, all I have to do is scroll through them all, and I can check off students. So I could be like, oh, there's each student in alphabetical order. So scrolling through makes it much faster when you grade things. So we learned how to make more than one Jamboard for a class, how to assign the Jamboard frame numbers and Jamboard numbers, a shortcut for using the sheets and putting student information in there. And you can link that to wherever it is that you store your information. I use Google Sites, but you could use Google Classroom, wherever you want to put that information for the students. So I hope that helped. And again, if it did help, let me know. Or if you have any questions, let me know. If there's any follow-up videos I can make for you, I'm happy to. And if it was helpful, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks and have a wonderful day.